right, welcome everybody to session five. This is not session six, session five, because we had a holiday yesterday. Hopefully you all had, had a relaxing and enjoying Friday. Um, maybe you missed me, hopefully you missed me. I missed you guys, this is fun actually, I enjoy it. I look forward to 4 p.m. every day. I also see some people with video on. Hello Dhruv, hello Shiv, good to see you guys. We'd love to get to see more of you and, and see more of you, so if you want to, um, would appreciate if you can turn your video on. Uh, now that everybody in this in this group are students and verified. So um, big news coming out in the past day. You may have heard, you may not have heard, but you may have heard that University of California has canceled SAT and is going, yep, Shiv's heard of it, he's nodding. Um, and they will be phasing it out over the next five years. So first of all, that's awesome. Nobody likes more testing, right? So if there's less testing for colleges, that's amazing. Um, at the moment, the decision is only for UCs. It's not for all universities in the US, although if you ask me personally, I bet that it, it's gonna start to take on all over the United States. Most universities are already optional, but um, it's essentially they're waiting for the top IB universities to also drop SAT. Once they drop it, then the SAT is dead as we know it. So it's a potential. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen, but for now it's not. The other reason is that um, California is home to like most of the, the rich students in the US. And so all states want to attract more California students. So that, we, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, looks like SAT might disappear soon. So if it does, that's really cool. Um, but um, for, now, for now, we don't know. We're just in, in an uncertain state. So given this news, if you're applying to UCs, then I would like you to reconsider if studying for the SAT is even worth your time. Um, if you're applying to other universities, then again, maybe studying for SATs works. But um, here's the thing. I'm, I'm actually surprised that there were about 100 people, 100 more people that signed up for this class in the beginning because this year SATs have already been canceled, right? Because of the virus. And so I'm already surpri surprised that many of you are on this call in the first place. So the purpose of this class in the, from the beginning was just to get ahead. Um, I would hope that students can get their SAT done before they start their IB or before they start the last two years of high school. And so that was my purpose. Um, and for those people that are currently in IGCSEs, by that time, the virus would have uh, gone away. But I see there's people from all over. So the decision is yours whether you want to continue or not. Um, I am going to ask you that um, whether or not you would like this class to keep going or not. So let me put out a yes, no poll. Um, yeah. And then you can tell me if you want this class to keep going or not. All right, looks like the people have voted. So <laughs> here are the results. So these classes will keep going. Um, I, hope, I hope you guys are getting a lot more out of it than just SAT prep. I mean, the way I'm trying to teach is these kinds of things can be helpful for more than just outside of SAT. Hopefully like identifying mistakes is something you can use in your other math classes. And as we go to the English section, then um, I hope it's helpful outside as well. So I'm gonna try and make this as much, um, as, as broad as possible so you can apply it in different ways. And and again, like if SAT gets canceled, that's a, that's a really good thing. Like I'm jealous of you guys if that happens in the future because I had to study a lot for the SAT and now I'm having to study for a second time now. Oh, cool, more people I can see. Sup, Yvonne? Sup, Aryan? Um, thank you for having your videos on. <laughs> All right. So with this, I'm very happy that we're gonna keep going and let's review uh, the mistakes that, the errors that we've caught so far. So I will share my screen again. And for those of you that are joining, oh, actually, let's do this. This will be fun. Um, can everybody answer this question, please? All right, three, two, one, cool. Okay, so it looks like we have some new, some new people here, or maybe some people that weren't here in the first class. So welcome to the class. Um, this is, this is I'm, just, I'm just playing around. All right, let's, let's do serious stuff. Can you still see the poll? The poll should be gone, right? 
Okay, cool. Thanks for nodding, Shiv. Cool. So now let me actually share my screen. And these, so for those of you that are new, this is what we've covered so far. So you can take a screenshot of it. And, um, and we, will, we will go over this many times, so this will make sense. But these were the mistakes that we had caught, right? Now, many of you sent me your scores, so thank you for doing the SAT. Um, can you guys in chat write down what is your most frequent mistake that you make? Even if you've not taken the SAT, just by looking at these errors, which one is the most frequent one that you make? Can you write down in chat for everybody, please? Um, just for this practice test or in general? All right, questions are coming in. So copying the wrong sign, reading too quickly, misreading, quickly reading, handwriting. Again, misreading, second part question, misreading graph, misreading question, misreading question. There's a lot of misreading questions, read too quick. Handwriting or misreading, misreading the second question. Okay, this, this actually makes me really happy because in today's class, we are going to go over reading questions. So you will notice that all of these here, okay, the ones I've selected, they're all to do with misreading. So this is where we're gonna go over the class today. Now, before that, I have, a, um, I have another question for you. I want you to carefully look at all of these errors. And remember, we are trying to find the root cause of your mistake, right? Can you guys think a little bit more and figure out what is the root cause of all of these mistakes? It's clearly not knowledge, right? All of you guys know math really well. You're in high school. And these are like pretty small mistakes. So what do you think is the root cause of all of these mistakes? So we have rushing, okay. So um, rushing is the first guess um, because many people can go through it quickly but still get it correct. So rushing can be a contributor but I don't think it's the root cause. There's a lot of time. I want you to think a little bit more. What could it, what could it be? There's overconfidence, that's an interesting one. Um, I think overconfidence could also, also play in a role, but there's many of you that are very over, that are overconfident and confident, and you still get it right, right? Like when you do a, a test paper and you're really confident, if I'm just giving you additions like five plus five and six plus six, you will get it right. So what's, keep thinking, like what is the, what's the real root cause of all of these? It's not time, it's not, I would say it's not confidence and not time. There's mental exhaustion, you're getting close, there's anxiety and panic that, again, it's close. It's, it's to the same thing. Lack of practice, again, not really lack of practice. Like this, we've been practicing these things since we started in primary school, right? We've been working with negative numbers since primary school. Not mentally ready. Okay, so many of you are, are very close. <laughs> the, question, the question is, what's the root cause of all of these mistakes? So, okay, I'm gonna come back here. So in, in, my, in my perspective, the root cause of all of these mistakes is, is lack of focus, right? Lack of attention. Do you, do you agree with that so far? Let me do another poll. Okay. I argue that it's lack of focus. Do you, would you agree with that statement? And focus is not like a perfect word. It's um, like attention, focus, concentration. Those like people that, you know, touched on mental exhaustion, like that's, that's getting to the realm of the area. Because we've done these kinds of things before. None of this is new. So let me share the results. Okay, so this is what we have. So I'm going to pitch this to you. My, I'm thinking that you guys know how to work with negatives. You guys also know how to read questions. It's just that you're not reading questions in enough detail. And so there's a lack of focus. I agree that time is a very important factor in decrease of focus, because if, there, if you have to go fast, you tend to focus less. But I think it's possible to do things quickly, but still focus um, and still give a lot of concentration to your paper. Now, the reason I bring this up today is because from what I've seen, Education doesn't really help you build your concentration. 
there's no, there's no aspect of education that really helps you build concentration. And so you will see these many, many uh, reports and studies and um, studies where they've done, where they'll be like, if you eat certain foods before a test, you do better. If you sleep eight hours before a test, you do better. If you breathe deeply before a test, you do better, better, right? If you envision yourself succeeding, then you'll do better. So these are many, many techniques that have been used and that, that um, contribute towards your focus and your mental um, agility in the moment. So we're going to, I'm introducing the topic today. I want you to think about it and let me know what you think. But we're going to touch upon this later because if I tell you that closing your eyes and breathing, deep breathing for four minutes can increase your SAT score by, by 20 points, isn't that worth it, right? We're going through so much work trying to learn negatives and whatnot, but I'm telling you deep breathing is going to help you increase your score or eating a banana as opposed to an apple before a test can increase your score. Isn't that banana worth it, right? Or coconut water in your drink break as opposed to like 100 plus can again help you increase your score. Then shouldn't we be aware of these things, right? Um, so so that's, that's my point. So we, we want to look at non-mathematic things because as a body, you know, we are, as a mind, we're functioning. How can we make this machine um, be as well oiled as possible? So that's, that's my pitch for today. Um, we will come back to this topic. But today, many, many of you, I think like almost all of you, um, wrote down reading questions. So that's, that's all we're going to focus on. So, um, Dhruv, I'm going to call you because I read your, your notes and um, you should be able to unmute yourself. And I want you to just yep. um, show us how you would, now that you've done, you've understood how you can misread a question, I want you to try and guess how you can correctly read a question. So let me share my screen. I will share a question. And then you tell me how to correctly read it. What would you do? All right. All right, so Dhruv, I want you to read question one and tell me, like, guide me through reading question one. What do I do? Okay, so there's an equation given x minus one over three equals k. Wait, sorry, my, my computer is off. Can you start again? Uh, so there's an equation given x minus one over three equals k. Okay. So, uh, and they give that k is equal to three. Okay, so, so I'm guessing you're telling me that this is important, right? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. now they want the answer to the question that they want is the value of x. Okay. So what they're asking so, for ask is x. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then so what? I guess uh, subbing in k equals three would give us uh, you know solving the equation would give us x. Yeah. So that would be solving the equation. Are you? Um, we're still on reading the equation. So are you? Are you done with reading the equation? Or sorry, reading. Yes. The yes. Oh, wait, there's options as well, I there's guess. Options. I mean, yeah. Yes, okay, so, so continue reading. What else do you see? Hmm. That's all I see. Well, you see the options, but so read the options. Like, what, what comes out of it? Uh, well, x is either equal to 2 or 4 or 9 or 10. Okay, that is correct. So, we so have, what else can you discern? Like, what else do you notice in these options? Well, some of them are really small. Okay, so and small and big. So it seems like all options, yeah. are, um, options are between 10 and two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do you notice? Um, well, I mean, some of the options would give uh, a value of less than one, right? Because the numerator would be smaller than the denominator. That is true. So that's again, I think where that's solving. So I want to keep yeah. saying that if I just give you these four numbers, um, yeah. what do you see? There's one more thing. Oh, this. Um, all I see is that B and C are squares. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. B and C are squares. Okay. So these are. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so mm. much. Um, we'll no have Yes, come out and can somebody else tell me what is one more thing that you notice about these options? Um, Arv, go ahead. Um, is it that nine is the only odd number then? Awesome. Yep. This is odd. And we have even, even, even. Sweet. Thank you so much, Arv. Does anybody else notice anything else in this question? 
You can raise your hand. You guys do? Okay, Aparna, you want to come up? Uh, two is lesser than three, so x cannot be two because if it's two, it's one by three, and then k would be lesser than three. Okay, so you have this option is two is less than three. That's a really good one. I didn't see that. Thank you so much. Nice. Okay, anybody else see anything else? Bhavani, you still have your hand up? You wanna, is this, if you have something new, you can come on up. Um, also nine is probably one that is the multiple of three. Nine is the only multiple of three, yes. Only multiple of three. Yes, good observation, wow. Very well done. Uh, good additions at the end, thank you. Anybody else that sees anything else in this question? Nope, that's it. I think, I think we've really exhausted this question. So, so you will notice that in reading the question, um, there are some key aspects that really tell you a lot of information. And the most amount of information comes out from reading the options, right? Knowing this information, that there's some even ones, some odd ones, some are less than three, some are multiples of three, and the range is between two and 10, no, just being aware of this, once you know this, and then you go in and you read, you figure out how to solve it, that will, diff, that will defer, or sorry, that will impact the approach that you take to solve your question. The, the normal approach is you substitute K, but maybe there's another approach here because of these other options um, that, that you, you've discovered. So today's class will be just, will be just this, and it will become a little repetitive, but, but here, let me take this off share for a second. Okay, so this will become a little repetitive, but it's important because mathematics is logic, right? You learn something, um, you, you know it. And in that case, you, you don't need to learn it again. Like if I tell you two plus two is four, you just know it, you don't need to practice this. Reading questions is not really logic. That, it's a different part of the brain. That part has to be practiced. Just like reading has to be practiced, it's not logic. Right, you get faster. Or solving math questions also has to be practiced. This is another thing that has to be practiced. And as we crowdsource different things, like you will, um, I'm very happy that people pointed out that two is less than three and there's a multiple of three. These are things that maybe you didn't see in the beginning, but now you're building that muscle to notice those, um, those aspects of the question. So in, in the future, when you go do your own question, you can also notice these things. So um, let me share my screen. Okay, no, so sorry. So there's four, there's four things we're gonna focus on. So I will ask somebody to come up for each question, read the question, and then we'll, we'll build on it, um, build on what the first person does. So there's four parts. First part is you wanna highlight any important information. So like Dhruv highlighted the equation um, and Dhruv highlighted that K equals three, okay? Second thing you wanna write down is any numbers or, or units that have been given. So in this case, the second part would actually be K equals three. If K is three pigs, you make sure you write down pigs. And if K is three, um, I don't know, rulers, you write down rulers. So first is important parts of the question, numbers and their units. Um, the third is what's the ask? And many of you wrote down this one, right? The second part questions, that's where they trick you because we, don't, we haven't committed the ask to memory. So in this case, the ask was simple, what is X? But in second part questions, it's not that simple. So what's the ask? You have to clearly write it down. And then the fourth thing is really look deeply into the, um, into the multiple choice. Now, I know this will initially make the, taking the test longer and reading the question longer, but that's what we're practicing. So it sort of becomes um, second nature. Great, so let's go back in, let's jump in and let's see what we can discover about paper one today. All right, so please raise your hand if you want to volunteer to read a question. Sonali, come on up. You want to read question two for us, please? Sure. Um, so for i equals um, square root of negative one, what is the sum of um, seven plus three i in brackets plus negative eight plus uh, nine i in brackets? Yeah. So let's do part one. What is, what's the important things in this? What are the important parts of this? Um, so one is that the variable i equals um, the square root of negative one. Perfect. 
and that we're trying to find the sum of um, those two terms, which is seven plus three i and right. negative eight plus nine i. So our ask is sum of this, right? Mm -hmm. But there's one more important thing, which is, I mean, I guess you read it out, but this, this is also important, right? Obviously. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So first is done. We have two important things. The second part is sum is important. What we want to know is the sum. So this is important, which you have. Um, what's the third part? There's no, or there's nothing with units in here. Okay, let's keep on. Let's go to the fourth part now. So, um, sorry, what was the fourth part again? The fourth I part is reading the, um, the MCQs. What do you notice? Okay. What are some trends that you notice in MCQ? Well, for one, all of them have uh, like a whole number and then like a term with a unit. Yes. So constant yeah. plus uh, constant times i, right? Yep. Okay. What else? Um, yeah. All of the options also have like a 12 or a 6 before them. Okay. So this is either 12i or 6i. Yeah. And for the constant, it's either negative 1 or 15. Okay. Perfect. Negative 1 or 15. Super. Um, and actually, this is this is negative six i only, right? So positive twelve i and negative six i. Yes. Uh, is there anything else? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Sorry, no. Okay. Yeah. Does any? That's. I think that's good. Um, I can't see anything else unless anybody else. Anika, you want to add something? You want to come on up? Uh, no, I just had a doubt. Uh, so, so we see that op all the options are then i so i don't think i equals root minus one is that important that's fine so that's that's when you go into solving the question that's fine but when you're reading the question you still um you still want to know what i is no but then the options when you read when you read the question when you read the option also i don't think i equals root minus one comes so important, becomes so important. That makes sense. But because you're starting here, by the time you get to the end of this sentence, so for i equals negative one, you don't know whether it's important or not. So you want to just add this to your head. As, and okay. I understand that in this question overall, but you're going through this sequentially. So you want to make this easy for yourself. So that's why this is important. Okay. Thank you, Anigit. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else has anything else in number two? Neil, what's up? What do you, what do you find? Uh, hi. So, um, I mean, uh, one more thing I can see is, uh, the options A and C and B and D correspond. Cause you can see for A and C it's 12 by 12 by, and there's a difference of 14 and B and D it's minus six I minus six I, and then there's a difference of 14. So no. uh, there's that common difference of 14. So 12, uh, where's the difference of 14 in B and like, D? For A and C, the the second term is 12i for both, and yeah. then you've got minus 1 and 15. So there's a difference of 14 there. Oh, and then for okay. B and D, you've got minus 6i, minus 6i, yes. and then also minus 1 and 15. So another difference of 14. Yes, okay. So it's actually, it's a difference of 16, right? Because it's negative 1 and 15. Okay, but, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's a really, that's a really good observation, actually. So they correspond. So a 16 difference. Really good. Amazing. Nice. Okay, I think, uh, thank you, Nia. That was a really good one. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I think we beat this question to the ground. Uh, let's do the next one. Who wants to come out and read uh, this message, this uh, question for us? Shiv, come on out. Um, okay, so I guess this is a word problem. Yeah. So, um, like on Saturday afternoon, so I guess they're establishing a context. Um, Armand sent M text messages each R for five R's, okay. and Tyrone sent P text messages each R for four R's. Okay, so, wait, no, actually, let's, sorry, let's, let's, um, let's slow down. So what would you highlight? What would you do after, when you reach a comma, just tell me what would you do with, with the words pre before the comma? Um, so uh, I'd highlight um, M and each R for five R's. Okay. And P each hour for four hours. So M each hour for five hours. P is each hour for four hours. Okay. Um, I actually at this stage I might also highlight Armand and Tyrone. Agreed. Just in okay. case that comes up like a distinction between them. Yeah. Good job. Then um, 
of this, like they, they ask the question that they give the ask, which is which, uh, like what is the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? So I guess um, I'd highlight represents because they're clarifying that they don't want like an actual number, they simply want an expression. So I do represents and total number of messages. Ah, good one, good one, okay. So it and then um, I'd read the options. So, so one more, one more thing. We uh, where are the units? Where can we grab units from? Um, hours. Hours, right? So okay. So, um, so if um in these word problems, what I like to do is just like start writing things down. So A is M um, for, and this is hours. And Tyrone is P, which is also hours. Okay. Um, wait, the unit for M, wouldn't that be messages per hour? Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Yes, good catch. And the answer, what is the units of the answer that we're looking for? Uh, messages. Okay, so ask is a, a function and the units is messages. Okay, so just by, this is important because just by looking at this, you will notice that we will have to multiply M and P by hours in order to cross out hours. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I guess, yes, okay. So that's important. All right, so um, keep going, Shiv. What else? Let's go to the fourth part. Okay, so then, um, yeah, so now I guess now that we've established our units and we know that they're asking like the, the total number of messages as an expression, yeah. I'd reach up, I'd read each of the four expressions. Okay. So what I notice is that the first two is uh, simply a product of M and P with, okay. an, uh, with an integer value multiplied to them. So we have MP for M plus P, right? Yeah, so yeah, so the first two options are a product of M and P, yeah. and the second two is like a linear combination. It's like um, yeah, yeah. something like a coefficient times M plus a coefficient yeah. uh, times P. And um, I yeah. say like the, like, I mean, just like interesting, like there's the relationship between all of the options, like nine is the sum of five and four and 20 is the yeah. product of five and four. Five plus four, and this is five times four, okay. And um, yeah, and then, yeah, that's, that's all I've noticed. There's one more thing. What about C and D? Tell me something about C and D. Um, well, okay, so I guess like, I mean, they're, it's basically like the, the coefficients are like switched around. So in this, exactly. I guess it's really important to like read the question. Exactly, so it's M is either five or four and P is either five or four. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's there's one more thing I want to highlight, which is um, when you do units, you have units for for variables, but you also have units for numbers. So let's just also just highlight that this what's what's the units of nine or for, of four here? P. Uh, the units of four. So it's four hours, right? So the units of four is hours. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, and so therefore this, this becomes, what's the units of 4P? Uh, 4P would be messages. Messages, right? And what's the, what's the, units, what's the units here? So you have uh, that would be times... Um, hours squared divided by messages squared. So you met messages squared divided by hours squared. Exactly, times hours, because nine is hours, right? Oh, no, yeah, nine is five plus four, so it's hours plus hours. All right, yeah. So messages, yeah. So the, you get messages squared over hours. That's the units. So units can be very helpful in answering questions. Um, that's that's the key takeaway. Anybody else? Um, thank you so much. Um, anybody else can see anything else? Shiv, can you see something new in here? You have your hand raised. No, my bad. I just um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty new to Zoom. I just okay. No, worries. cool. Awesome. Okay, I I think we've we've also squeezed the juice out of this question. All right, let's go to the next one. This one's another big one. All right, um, who wants to read this question? So if you wanna raise your hands, you go to participants and raise your hand. Nimisha, come on out. 
Tanya, you can be next. Okay, so Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Okay. Each week, she receives a batch of phones that need repair. So, like that, I'd underline. Okay, so so what what's important? What would you underline in that? That she receives a batch of phones, like that, are needed for repair. So the so phones need to be repaired. A batch of phones that need repairs, but there's one more important thing here. And each week. Each week, nice. Okay, perfect. So we have batch of phones per week, basically, right? This is this is also, by the way, really helpful for physics people. If, if you just do this units process in physics, you don't need to work with numbers for most of the physics questions I've seen. But okay, great. Keep going, Michelle. You're doing great. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation p equals to 108 minus 23d. Okay. So say the phone she has left to fix at the end of each day. Phones, phones left to fix is equal to p, right? So, so in the, this is far. So I want I would just write this down again and re-highlight it. Phones left to fix. And what's the units of p? So p is like the phones she has left to pick, and what then you'd have would be the units? underline. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. what would be the units of P? P would be the phones. Phones, exactly. So P is, um, oh, okay, great. Keep going. Um, okay, and then the equation, where P is the number of phones left, yeah. so that is like important, yeah. and D is the number of days she has worked that week. So then you'd highlight what D is and write down what D is. D is the number of days she has worked that week. Okay, so let's put this down here. D number of days. And so days is the units. Mm -hmm. Work yeah. already that week. Okay, great. Let's keep going. What is the meaning of the value 108 in this equation? Awesome. And so that's what the question is asking you. So what is the meaning of 108? So let's circle this. Meaning of 108. Here we have a great ask. Yeah. So I would want to just write down ask again here, 108 meaning. Awesome, okay, let's keep going. Okay, so then you'd read the options. So A, Kathy will complete the repairs within 108 days. Yeah. So like, first you notice that that's giving 108 as a unit of time. Um, so that's the first thing to note about A, which is why it wouldn't work as constricted to each week. So, uh, so you'd, what do you mean unit of time? You, do you mean that 108 units is days? Is that what you mean? So yeah, so it's saying that 108 would stand for like days. Okay, yeah. And, and then, okay, keep going. Um, and then Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. And so then you highlight in that question, it's stating that 108 is the number of phones yep. that she has to go. And then you go to C, Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per hour. Okay. So that, and you'd highlight the rate of 108 per hour because that would indicate how fast she's working. Yep. And then similarly in D, Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per day. 108 per day. Awesome. What else, what else do you notice in the options? There's, there's one more, there's one other part of the options you want to notice. Um, and then with option B, it talks about starts each week. Yep, awesome. So starts each week. And we can highlight and the one, right? So we'll complete the repairs. Uh, repairs phones. So that this is um, repair rate. Mm -hmm. This is repair rate. Right? Yeah. Awesome. What else do we notice in this question? I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Aniket, do you notice something else? Thank you, Nimisha. The units, the units are different in A, C, and D. Ah, wait, um, different to what? Different to B, which is the number of phones. Yes, but then isn't, doesn't that apply to all of them? Isn't the units of A different than B, C, and D as well? So, okay, okay I, yeah. I, think saying, I think, um, I think what you're saying is that this is the only one where the units match P. Right? This is the only options where the yes. units are. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Anigid. Yeah. So look at so look, units can be helpful. Super. 
I think, I think we have all the learning from this one. Let's go to the next one. Number five, you remember this question? Okay, can somebody, um, who did I say? I forgot who I said. Oh, Tanya, I think it was you, right? You wanna come out and read this question? Um, x square y minus two y square plus five x y square in bracket yeah. minus minus x square y plus three x y square minus three y square in bracket. Yeah. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Um, I would highlight like equivalent. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Um, a four x square plus a uh, four x square y square. 8xy square minus 6y square, 2xy mm -hmm. plus 2xy square, 2x square y plus 8xy square minus 6y square. Yeah. So what do we notice here? Um, A doesn't have any other um, like coefficient and um, x or y with it. Yeah, okay. So, so this... Um, before we can do that, we have to notice that in the question, this and this match, this and this match, and this and this match, right? So what you're saying is, um, wait, what are you saying? Um, like if you simplify the question, then A doesn't have, a, like B, C, and D have minus plus or something, but 4x squared y squared like, doesn't have anything. Yeah, so actually what you'll notice is this actually doesn't even exist in the question. There's no x squared y squared in the question, right? Yeah. So, so what we notice is not there in question. Okay. So what do we see in B, C, and D? Um, we can see that uh. So let me help you out. So you notice um, we have this term, the x, y. So I, the, what I'm drawing here is like these, these symbols that I use, these weird symbols. So you have the x, oh no, that's not it. Um, we have the x, y squared, which is this squiggly. And then we have this, the y squared symbol, which is jaggedy. Here we have the x squared y, which is the straight line, and x, y squared which is squiggly. And here we have x squared y, which is line, x y squared, which is circles, and x and y squared, which is jagged. Yeah, and also like in the equation, um, minus two y squared and plus two y squared cancel out. So yep. any equation with a uh, y squared, like coefficient and y squared only wouldn't be there. Yeah. So we'll just highlight two things that the coefficients, they look similar here, but um, one of them cancels out, one of them doesn't, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so when you notice that this cancels out, which one, which one cancels out again? Y squared cancels out, right? Yeah. And so this has a y squared and this has a y squared. This doesn't even exist in the question. A doesn't even mm -hmm. exist in the question. So C is the one that makes sense, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Does any? Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, does anybody else see something else? Any case, is your hand up? Is there something else? Or Neil, what do you see? Uh, yeah. Hi. Okay. Sorry. So um, one thing uh, is that as you go down, the options, they start to increase in length. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then uh, if you look at... Um, uh, option D, it's actually, uh, they, they took option B and then they added the first term of C to it. Okay, so B, so B plus, no, C plus first term of B is equal to D. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, no, D is equal to B plus the first term of C. D is equal to B plus the first term of C. Okay, plus this, got it. Okay, yes. Yeah, and then uh, just one more thing is the use of the word uh, equivalent, because yeah. usually, um, and because in this specific question, equivalent simply means equal to, but you know, usually when they use equivalent, it's usually some sort of, there's an extra factor, like an equating factor, like, you know, E is equal to MC square. 
but over here the use of the word equivalent is just simply it means equal to equal to okay nice yes awesome yeah that's it okay i think we can also notice that the the coefficient of x squared y is always 2 so it's always 2x squared y um the coefficient of xy squared is either so xy oops xy squared is either 8 or 2 so let me follow the same strategy so 2 and the coefficient of y squared is negative 6 so essentially the only thing you really need to look at um, is is it 8 or 2 that's another thing we can find out here anything else Folks, I really appreciate it. I When I prepared for this, I didn't notice many of the things you guys are pointing out. So uh, this makes me happy. I'm also learning a tremendous amount. Okay, let's go to, let's do C, let's do six. Um, who, wants to, who wants to come out and do this one? All right, we need somebody to come out and read six for us, please. Sonali, come on out. Hi, okay. So um, the first thing that we see is an equation. Um, so for H, we have 3A plus 28.6. Yep. So yeah, that's the first thing I would highlight. Um, okay, so a pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height H of a boy. Okay. Um, so I would say uses the model above to estimate the height h height h um and then in inches in inches perfect. i would also highlight that um in terms of the boy's age in years okay so i would probably highlight um boy's age a yeah so a um age years and this is actually Eight inches, okay. Mm -hmm. Be between the ages of two and five. Um, I don't know if I would highlight that just because I don't think it's relevant yet. Um, well, so, so actually, base, we, let's be careful. So because we've done this question, we know this is not relevant, but we know that this model is accurate between um, A between two and five. So let's just, let's just write that down. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Um, yeah, so based on the model, which, which, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? So okay. what they're asking is basically the um, increase um, in inches of um, the, like what the model is showing in terms of the increase in inches every year. So increase in inches of what? Keep going. Increase of the boy's height. Of height? Of height. Each year. Each year, perfect. So this is really important. Right, so at each year, estimate increase at each year. So this is, this is the ask. So many of you, many, many, many of you um, struggled with this one, but the height is, is basically asking for um, increase in height each year. Okay, what else? Let's keep going. So the options are three, 5.7, 9.5, and 14.3. Yeah. Um, right off the bat, A is the only integer answer. Okay, integer answer, okay. Good one. Um, the others are all like one decimal point. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to like think of how you might get the other answers. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So, so. I think probably if you divide three by 28.6, you'll get one of the answers. Um, yeah. yeah, you'll get 9.5, around 9.5 if you do 26, uh, 28 divide, point six divided by 3. Okay. Um, so yeah, the others are not so sure yet how you would get, but um, yeah. Awesome, good work, good work. Okay, anybody else? Thank you so much, Anamik. Anybody else notice something else that they want to point out? There's, there's two more things to be noticed here. Sam, go ahead. 
when I first saw the equation, I thought of y equals mx plus b, awesome. where the b would be um, the starting point. And then three would be the slope. And if I were to put a as my age, that, that one, because it's each year, yeah. then I would get it a, which awesome. is three. Yes, perfect. Okay, so you, so you notice that the equation looks like y equals mx plus c. Awesome. Um, and, then, and then that's when you jump into solving. That helps you. Great. What else? What do you notice about the answer choices, Sam? Or if nothing else, that's fine. Um, I don't see anything else. Okay. Oh, 14.3 is half of 28.6. Awesome. 28.6 divided by 2. Perfect. Great. And there's one more thing. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. Is it? Ahan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, twenty-eight point six divided by five will be nearly five point seven. Awesome. Okay, twenty-eight point six. All right, and there's one more thing. What do we notice about a? Can somebody tell me what we notice about a? It's our slope. Yeah, a is slope. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. A is slope. This is important. Cool. Um, I think that's it, right? I think so. So. In these ones, we, we, did, we did find these two things now, or even this. You, you can think about it. If you, don't figure, if you don't think about it, that's fine. Like, right now, we're just really going deep and trying to learn how to read a question and, and notice these nuances about the answers. But we're not, we're not, you're not expected to, to notice that 5.7 is 28.6 divided by 5. Cool. Um, OK, let's, let's, take a, let's take a quick breather. Um, stop share here. All right, so does, um, here, let me do this poll, poll real quick. Okay, the question here is, did what we, uh, what we went through in the past 10 minutes, did that make sense? That's the question. The question is, did what we, what we did, does that make sense? Okay, and what should, the only part of it that should make sense is the process, which is there's four things you're looking for. Um, okay, so this is, this is what we have. So the only thing that should make sense is there's four parts of reading the question. And um, I want you guys to write this down in your pure notes. So many of you started to write down the approach to reading questions. And so I want you to write this down. Reading questions, under reading question, the first part is highlight important information. The second one is write down values and their units. The third part is clearly write out the ask. The ask is important, so clearly write out ask. And the fourth part is read through the options. Okay, so these, these four things should be in there. Um, so, Nanki, did you have something? No? Okay, cool. So highlight important information, write down values and their units, write down ask, clearly write down the ask, and read through the options. Cool, okay, let me do the survey again. The question this time is, does it, does it make sense how this process can help you avoid many of the mistakes in misreading question? That's the question. The question is, does this, do you see how this process can help you avoid your mistakes? Sweet and full. Cool, looks like it's making sense. Great. So, um, what I, what I had asked Naman to do when I was doing this with Naman was Naman went over the entire third paper and the entire fourth paper for every single question. He went through and he highlighted, um, he did these four things for every single question. So when you're practicing, I want you to take a paper, an entire math paper, and just for the entire math paper, only do this. And it's best if you can do it with um, a friend and, and, and learn this. Now, okay, Ahan, I, I appreciate how 
the point that this, okay, this will take, this will take long. This will take very long. Even doing this for one paper will take, you know, two hours, maybe even three hours. But in the exam, you're not doing, this is just to practice. This, we're only doing this to practice reading and noticing these questions. Let me, let me drive this home with another point. Having done these five or six questions today, I'm going to relaunch a poll. The question is, having does the, done these six questions today, are there new things that you will now notice in options? That's the question. Having done these six questions today, are there new things you will notice when you read a question? Cool. So this is what we have. So just by doing six questions, you really change the way your brain works in approaching a question. You will notice coefficients, you will notice uh, negatives, you will notice signs, you will notice units. And for those of you that had, did not um, learn anything new today, then keep going through the paper. Again, you will add to that repository of things that we noticed. Just how when we were going through mistakes, we added different mistakes to look out for. That's not an exhaustive list. You will make many more mistakes that are potentially not there on that list. But the idea is I'm teaching you to note down these mistakes and write it down so that when you make a new mistake, you write it down. Similarly, when, we go through, when you go through the paper and read the questions, you are practicing noticing new things that you may not notice before. And this is best, if, if you do this with a friend, it's even better. Like uh, so many people contributed to a question and there's new things that you may not have seen that we now saw. So it's, it's actually really, really crucial and powerful exercise. And it sets us, it sets us up for what we'll do in the future, which is, we will look at all the different ways to answer the same question. And reading the question properly, especially looking at the answers, will help us pick um, the fastest and most creative way. So you may spend maybe 30 more seconds in reading the question, but you will save maybe a minute or more in answering the question. So does that make sense here? I'll do another poll. Does, that, does it make sense? Does the benefit of this exercise, reading the question, make sense? Awesome, three, two, one, cool. This is what we have. Great, so, so you guys are getting it. Um, 75 of you understand the benefit. So this is, this is a key, reading question is key. Like if you notice, if you scroll just back up, many of you put down um, the mistake of reading too quickly. So this is the solution. Um, great, okay, I'll stop sharing this. We will do one more question and then I will send you guys out with some more music. Um, can someone raise their hand that wants to do the last question for us? Sam, your hand is raised. You want to come up? Or Dave, you want to come up? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Let's read this one. Okay. That's... Um, so M is equal to yep. some complicated expression yep. times P. Uh, the formula above gives the monthly payment M needed to pay off a loan of P dollars at R percent annual interest over N months, okay. which of the following gives P in terms of M, R, and N. So first thing I'd say, I mean, okay, the ask of the question is, so hold which on. of the, Don't all right, I'll go back. So <laughs> it gives the, what yeah, so the. M is the monthly payment. M is monthly payment. Whoops. Yes, M is monthly payment. Okay. Yeah. Um, loan of P dollars. Loan of P dollars. R percent annual interest. Oh. Annual interest. Uh, N months. Yes. Cash and N months. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the ask of the question is to find P in terms of M, R, and N. To find P in terms of N, R, and and um, so I would I would recommend you guys write down the ask specifically. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So coming to the options, yeah. we have that same uh, complicated expression times m. Okay. So uh, same as question, but m and p have been p are swapped. swapped. Yeah. yeah. 
the other one is like a reciprocal and then m and p are swapped okay so m and p are swapped but fraction let's see cool okay yeah and um the third one is just the the rate over 1200 so just part of the fa fraction yeah so this is the okay so this is just the half of numerator right and m and p are switched yeah right? however this is already coming over here right and what do we have for d yeah. um it's the reciprocal of that half of the numerator and m and p are swapped numerator cool and m and swapped awesome what else do we notice um, I mean, I think this just gets a bit into solving the question itself. That if you do, I mean, some of uh, just a bit of the algebra, you, you divide uh, both sides yeah. by, yeah, by m, and then so when m and p will swap, the fraction needs to become its reciprocal. Yeah. I think the other the other thing I would notice is, or ask yourself, why have they given you this option? What do they? What are they trying to prompt you to do? Or what, what are they trying to catch you to do? Um, perhaps use, like, I mean, confuse you with your prior knowledge of, um, like, maybe the formula for uh, okay. compound interest or something. Catch. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we, have, we had a few people raise their hand. Um, so thank you, Shivan. Did you raise your hand? You want to come out and say something? Uh, yes, I think that they wanted us to cancel out uh, 1 plus r by 1200 to the power n from the numerator and the denominator. Yeah, so they wanted you to cancel this, right? And that's why you get left with that. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense too. And we'll, we also know that this canceling does not make sense. Awesome. I think that's it, right? Unless anybody has anything else in this question that they notice. No, nope. so maybe the units don't matter after all in this question. That's what we realized after reading the entire question. But it's good we know that. Perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, tomorrow is parent special, so all of you are on a holiday. Um, please send me your math scores. Um, actually, no, don't send me your math scores anymore because now we've talked about results. Um, if you have time, do the English as well tomorrow. Only if you have time, no pressure, and send me your English scores. Uh, math scores from now on will not be considered. All right, let me send you guys out with some music. We are done for today. See you guys on Monday. Oh, 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 oh.